Hey guys, You Are Not an Artist is the name <laughs> of our podcast that's meant to trigger you, in case you guys are wondering. It's an interesting story how we came up with that, but we'll talk about that later. This is our podcast. My name is Alejandro Castañon. My wife, Shelby Seymour. Say hi, babe. Hello, guys. Welcome to our podcast. We're going to be talking today about the creative process yes. and why that's such an important part of phase one. If you guys don't know about our three phases that we've created uh, through this program, head over to the website and click on the three phases um, on the menu bar, correct? Yes, which yes. you can also find the website down below in the link description or wherever you are on this yeah. podcast. Wherever the description is, there our website will be. There it is. Yeah. So if you want to get caught up on what the three phases are, go check them out. You'll read up on them and then you'll have an understanding of what we're talking about in this creative process. So uh, why don't we start off by talking about um, what we've discussed in the past in terms of what a creative process is. All right. You want to go first? Sure. So a creative process is not actually creating the art itself. The creative process is whatever means it takes to get into the flow hmm. and the flow state is essentially that kind of effortless place where you stop thinking about your problems or time or whatever's going on around you right. and you're just enjoying the moment um for a lot of artists it was when we were in junior high and high school and we just doodled for hours right didn't matter what was happening we were just completely lost in our music and yeah. Yeah, whatever we're drawn. Your creative process has nothing to do with your medium, by the way. So yes, it doesn't matter what you're. It, yeah, it doesn't. It's not. It a, doesn't even matter if you're an artist. Every basket, every basketball player, every athlete has a process. Mm -hmm. Every everyone ha like everyone has a process, just like everyone has a process for going to sleep. And actually, the process of going, getting into a flow state, is not any different than going to sleep. Hmm. When you're going into the flow state, you're going into the alpha brain waves. When you're going into sleep, you're going into delta brain waves. Mm -hmm. So what happens when we try to go to sleep? We can't just lay down and be like, sleep! <laughs> you're not like Data from Star Trek. Yes. Can't you just close your eyes and just be asleep. You yes. you have to like pretend to be asleep so that you can sleep. Yes. Yeah. So, and what happens when we can't sleep? We lay down and we go, I have to sleep, I have to sleep, I yes. have to sleep. And then we can't do it. Yeah. The only thing that actually makes you go to sleep is to not be thinking about it at all and sometimes you need a ritual to go to sleep right and most of us have a ritual we brush our teeth we put our pjs on we put our music our show our white noise on we get under the covers we snuggle mm -hmm. get in our mm -hmm. position if we have a partner or an animal we snuggle them mm -hmm. and we just let go that's right it's exactly the same as getting into the flow state that's right that's you right. can't force yourself to right. be in the flow you can only gently move yourself into the flow just like you can only gently move yourself and that's into the, sleep. that's the problem i think with a lot of artists is they try to force the creative process because i think of the ways we've been taught how we should create artwork it, it's always it's never talked about in terms of you know getting into this ritual and then getting into your artwork it's always put the canvas on the easel lay out your palette and your colors you know get your brushes nice and clean and you know do your sketch it that it's it's so you know it, it's so objective it's in the so, way they it's, go yes it's like it, the problem is people describe it like you're a machine yes like now you produce and it's also what i don't like is if you're an artist you're supposed to be in this flow state creative place yeah 24 7 right like if you're an artist you must be drawing creating or doing yeah. something every single time someone looks at you right. which is not only bullshit, but it's also very un I agree. sustainable. <laughs> I agree. I think if you, there's a movie called Pollock. Have you seen Pollock? Mm -mm. It's a great movie. It's with Ed Harris. This movie is about, obviously, uh, Jackson Pollock. And it's great because it actually touches on his creative process. He would paint in this big barn with his canvas all laid out on the ground. And he'd have a cigarette in his mouth and house paint like cans laying all around. And that he would get into it that way. And he would just, that was his creative process. And I love that because you don't necessarily get to peer into that whenever you see like biopics about artists. I mean, when they talk about like, you know, Da Vinci and, you know, Michelangelo, you never get to see what their creative process is like. No. You just see like them working, but yeah. you never see what it's like to get into it. Absolutely. I would love to see that. And it's, it's too much of a fallacy because we see finished work. 
that we think that the person who mm -hmm. created it enjoyed it the whole time mm -hmm. and they were in it and they never struggled. Yeah. When actually, if you look at like Rembrandt's work, mm -hmm. if they x-rayed a lot of them and he said, fuck this and flipped it over and yeah. started over. Yeah. He wasn't like, no one just enjoys right. it all the time. And, and we just learned that Da Vinci didn't even finish a lot of his work. Yes. He was like, I'm bored. And he yeah. would just be, and people had, like when he was painting The Last Supper, they had to be like, please finish this. <laughs> yeah. Dear God, please 12 finish 12 years. This. It took him 12 yeah. years to finish The Last Supper because he just didn't, he could, I don't think maybe Da Vinci even understood his own creative process. No. I think he only knew how to follow the dopamine. I think And so when too. something was not giving him that hit, he was like, next. Next. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. So, um, you know, talking about your creative process is all about creating your own sense of understanding what works for you. Um, I remember when we first met, I, I'm just, and I'm still baffled at how you can paint on the ground. I like, can't paint on an easel. I, I would rather poke my eye out with a paintbrush. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. That's incredible to me that you're able to, first of all, be flexible to paint on the ground, Indian style, because I can't do that. Um, and for you to be able to to see the perspective by of the canvas looking down at it without looking straight at it. That's My brain doesn't work that way. But that's the way you like to paint. It's the only way I can paint. Yeah. It just, I have to be, I have never painted, I can't ever remember a time I actually painted something mm. that I wasn't sitting on the floor. Sometimes I have it propped up. If it's a big piece, it's propped against the wall. Or if it's a watercolor, I may have like a little like lap desk or something. Mm -hmm. But I have to be like sitting on the ground with my TV on, probably the TV and some music and the podcast playing. Yeah. I need to be like completely overwhelmed while I'm painting or yeah. creating. Yeah. For me, I think I have to have like, first of all, I have to have my headphones on with music that really kind of speaks to me. I think maybe music that's a little bit nostalgic that kind of puts me in a, I don't know, like my happy place, mm -hmm. you know, my brings it back a memory that I really, really love. And that really makes me feel good and get excited about just creating in general. Mm -hmm. And then I can easily get into a painting. And if I manage my flow state really well throughout that process, I can finish a painting in about two hours. Yeah, I think that's the same. And I think the best, my best, like my sweet spot would be if I'm creating something, which is usually a fan piece of some sort, I want to be able to kind of just envelop myself in that universe. So if I'm painting something like Lord of the Rings or like the yeah. Star Wars painting I did, right. I'm watching all the videos right. or watching all the movies and I'm on Tumblr looking at all the fan posts and sorry, our cat is breaking our house down too as we talk. Um, and I'm constantly like I just my flow state is losing myself in another world while I'm recreating it in some way. Yeah, and I think that's okay for you guys for you to you know want to kind of escape whatever your way is in terms of getting in and out of your flow state and just committing to it is completely okay. You don't need to ask for permission. You don't need to compare yourself to other artists and how they're creating. Sure, you can be inspired if it works for you. you can borrow. Certain yeah, absolutely. People's... There's no, there's no copyright on a creative okay, no, process. No, absolutely no not. one cares, and if someone cares, they're not worth yeah. caring if they care. So, so if you don't currently have a creative process, maybe you need to try to discover what really works for you and gets you into that kind of flow state. Just find what makes you feel good. Like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, especially if you're in art school. Yeah. If your art professor is like, this is not the way. No yeah. one cares. Nobody cares. Nobody really, yeah, no one gives a fuck. No. Do what makes you feel happy. Because when you're happy, you'll A, create the best art you can. Mm -hmm. And B, you'll be able to go for it longer. Yeah. Nobody created great art, like, in agony. No. Unless you're Michelangelo and the Sistine Chapel. Yes. And that was only because he was creating, like, graphic, like, rebellious art that no one could see because it was, yes. like, so high. Nobody would ever get up there and see what he actually painted. <laughs> This is glorious. Yeah, so, you know, don't be afraid to just kind of venture out and try to figure out ways that you like to create. Um, and, you know, try to be very aware of how you get into it. Because, you know, the preparation of you getting into this creative process is really key 
to executing really, really good artwork. Um, I would say that it's like 70%, you know, prep and creative process management and like 30% inspiration. 100%. Because you're not going, and especially when you become a professional artist, it's now your job to create. So you no longer have the luxury of waiting for the muse to strike you. Yeah. You have to to rope her and tie her down and make her work for you. Yeah, exactly. So you've got to um, figure out how to work and get into the flow state when you don't feel like it. Yeah. And when you're doing, you know this better than anyone, when you're doing commissions oh or, <laughs> or you're hired to do something. Yeah. Which is something you should definitely do. Sure. I've been there too. I'm like, I'm doing a portrait of somebody and I'm like, I would rather peel my skin off yeah. than keep working on this. But yeah. I need, mama needs the money. Yeah. Sometimes you'll get to the point where you have to take on a commission that you're just not completely excited about, but you know, you may need it in order to replenish some supplies or, you know, pay for something that you need to pay for. And so if you have a really honed in creative process, it makes it so much easier as opposed to if you don't have a really honed in creative process it's agonizing and you'll never finish it and even if you did finish it, it they would probably not like it absolutely and so that's really the crux of why you should create a creative process and a lot of people want to skip this step because again it's not sexy it doesn't it's not something you can put on instagram or get yeah. validation for yeah. no one's going to see your creative process and be like oh my gosh you're an amazing artist <laughs> Okay, it's not a step that people want to do, but it's critical when you need to scale your business because right. when you have to create more art because your inventory is depleting faster, mm -hmm. your creative process is going to push you through that. It's a lot like being able to run two miles versus being able to run a marathon. Right. If you're conditioned to only run two miles mm -hmm. and someone says, run a marathon, you're going to be in pain. Yeah, especially and, if you don't know how to prepare for the marathon. Yes, and then you're just, it'll be agony for weeks after that. And you'll probably end up burning out and being like, I'm done. Yeah. But if you slowly work your way up to, mm -hmm. oh, I can run 30 miles now, as, as someone who has done this, you don't even notice it. Yeah. You don't, your mind is totally used to the time it takes to run. You're and your body. The, your, like, everything is in the moment of running. And you're totally happy to do it. That's the same way when you're creating um, professionally. You have to start with learning how to run a mile. And then you slowly try to work your way up to 5 miles, 6, 7, 8 miles. Then you do 15, 20. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, I can do 30 miles. Holy cow, how did I do that? That's what you have to have when you're really becoming a professional artist. Because to be someone who has a large career, especially if you want to be a full-time artist... You're going to have to have those marathon creative skills that are going to just be able to go for days and days. Yeah. Especially absolutely. when you don't feel like it. Yeah. I think that's the hard thing to kind of transition from whenever you're like, quote unquote, a hobby artist and you're mm -hmm. ready to take it seriously. It's the seriousness of having to do it that you have to understand that it takes that commitment of building that habit as opposed to, like you said earlier, just jumping on whenever in, you're inspired to do it. Yes. Like going from like hobby to professional is like a true like mental commitment um, and all from mind, body, and soul commitment because like you said, you're going to be uncomfortable in so many different situations mm -hmm. that you're like, your mind is going to be like, well, I'm too tired and I'm not in the yes. right mental space or I'm not feeling good and you know I'm stressed and I just don't want to get on. You really have to have a firm commitment of understanding that building the habit of, you know, getting, you know, into your creative process is crucial. If you really want to succeed, you know, it's not, you know, it's not as glamorous and like romantic as they make it out to be that these artists only make two paintings a year and they always sell for $30,000 a piece. That's not a thing. Okay. So don't <laughs> think that that's going to work for you because it's, it's unheard of. That's not going to work. You know, the best artists actually created all the time. And most of their artwork was shit. That's fine. It's okay. It's absolutely okay. It's necessary for you to create a lot of work and for a percentage of it to be crap. It's going to be throwaway. Yeah, it's going to be throwaway. But, you know, because of all that, you know, consistency and lots of, you know, work 
and and you know inventory that they've built is what where they find where we find the gems that we've absolutely discovered and we talked about that last week which was quantity over quality quantity over quality absolutely so let's talk about how to create your or how to develop your creative process yeah so one it's just recognizing when you are in the flow state Mm. so again just kind of breaking this down a little further your flow state is when you feel good doing what you're doing you're hyper focused you're like i could do this like you have no interest of being like when is this going to end you're just you could do it forever you're just so in that moment. Yeah. That's a good indicator. Um, I would say another one, recognizing your creative process, is um, whenever you're not really focused on the painting itself. It's it's almost like you're absent of what you're painting. Yes. Yeah, 100%. And, because, and that's really key to um, if you've mastered your technique, you don't have to be 100% focused all the time on your mm-hmm. artwork. Mm-hmm. You don't. You're not creating from a conscious place. Right. Your subconscious is doing all the work, Correct. and you could be. I don't know, singing the Caribbean. Yeah, it's song. like driving. Yeah, it's just you're like, oh, oh, I did it. Yeah, it's like on autopilot. I don't remember doing this. Yeah, absolutely, it's like on autopilot. So I think that's one good indicator of having a good handle of your creative process. Another good indicator is whenever you're not feeling that, whenever you're obsessing. It's a good thing to be aware of when you're in that. To know when you're in it process. and to know when you have fallen out. Yes. It and usually it's like that scene in Soul <laughs> when they knock the people out of the flow state. Tell them what movie they're talking about. Okay, so I'm talking about Pixar's new movie, Soul. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's very good. So there's a scene where they're in like <laughs> this they're like in the metaphysical realm. Yeah. And there's the people in the flow state and they're in their little bubbles and they're like some are playing the piano, some are drawing, yeah. some are snowboarding. And they're just, oh, they're so in it. Well, the two characters, there's like, it's like snow on the ground. Yeah. And they like get a snowball and they throw it at one of the guys and it pops their little flow bubble and they like fall on the ground. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, what happened? And yes. it's like this terrible feeling. It's really like that. Yes. You're going to be in the flow and then nothing will necessarily cause it. And then you'll be like, it's like someone just kind of like hit you in the face and you're yes. like i don't like this now. yes recognizing whenever you're out of it is just as important as when recognizing when you're in it yes. because if you recognize you're out of it that's when you need to pause and, and take a break yes um a lot of artists say walking away from the painting i do that often um in fact you posted a picture recently of me on my phone with a mm-hmm. cat in my lap yes that was me taking a break from whenever i got out of the flow state mm-hmm. and i was just taking a short break to just kind of reset and then get back on the canvas and right. get back into my flow state. So it can be anything. You can go for a walk. You can get on YouTube or TikTok or make yourself a snack or whatever it is that you need to do um, in order for you to kind of recognize that that's when you need to stop. Absolutely. And so being able to manage when you're getting in and out of that flow state. So that means getting in it initially right. to get started and then realizing in the middle of creating that you've fallen out of it and being able to go, okay, Got to stop and take a break. And then being able to get back in it again. Correct. Once you do that, that's like a superpower for an artist. You can't be stopped because external circumstances no longer dictate if you're creating or not. And so many artists don't want to stop to take this, to build this skill and this stamina, yet they want to run the marathon. Mm -hmm. But they've only run like one lap around the track. Yeah. You've got to put in the time to build up those Mm -hmm. mental and literally, literally physical muscles. So let's break this down to the next, or let's take it to the next step. So you know what the flow state feels like. Let's talk about creating the ritual. Yeah. Um, There is a really good book that I would recommend called The Art of Learning. Um, I can't pronounce his last name. It's like Josh Whitesteel or Whitesteel. Just look up The Art of Learning. Great book. And it talks about um, building rituals. And uh, the ritual can be like you... Um, putting on your favorite music and um, making yourself um, your favorite breakfast and um, possibly having your cat on your lap and all that kind of puts you in this really great mental and emotional space and then 
you get on to your canvas or whatever is your medium is. Right. That's a ritual. The for ritual example. is just a set of practices that make you feel good Correct. and ready to create. Correct. And it's not any different than what we do in our normal lives. When we get up in the morning, we all have a ritual and we all know what it feels like to get up the morning late and not get your ritual. Mm, the yeah. whole day feels like you're underwater. Yes. You just feel like someone has socked you in the face. Yes. And so that's what painting feels like when you haven't followed through your ritual. Yes. It's like not getting your coffee and taking your shower and slowly getting dressed with your music. When we take the time to do that, oh, your whole day just feels Your whole feels day is so, like a vibe. Yes. Your whole day is a vibe. Yes. But when you like wake up and you're like, shit, I should, I gotta be working five minutes and you're just throwing crap on and you're, oh, you yeah. don't eat and oh, God. you're just rushing to work and you get there. It's the worst. Your eyes feel like your eyes hurt and your head is fuzzy and yes. you're like, I feel disgusting because I needed to take a shower this morning and you just hate work all day mm -hmm. and it feels like it goes on forever. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what it feels like when you get on the canvas and mm -hmm. you haven't done your ritual. Right. So the idea is for you to get to know what your ritual is. Um, that may take some time for you to understand. Uh, I think using that example of like how you get ready in the morning to kind of be in your A game mm -hmm. is a good way for you to kind of start with how maybe you can get on the canvas or whatever it is you're creating. And as you start to understand that ritual, start to make it as repetitive as possible every time you're about to get on whatever yeah. you're about to create. Um, and commit to that and really make it as consistent as possible. And over time, try to shorten that ritual to where maybe it's just one thing. Um, some artists, I've in the book that, that I was referenced, The Art of Learning, they referenced somebody that could just think about a song that got them into that flow state and ready to get on whatever it is they were going to do. And so the goal is to be able to shorten it so much that your efficiency is is just you know, out the roof and you can just get in and out of what you need to do quickly. Absolutely. So that goes on to our next step, which is creating a habit. So once you've developed your ritual, then you're one going to, it's not going to like stick right away. You're not going to be like, here's my ritual and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to paint and it's going to feel great. Mm -hmm. Literally, you're rewiring your mind. And humans, once we get some, once we have our wiring set in our brain, our brain doesn't like to change, which is why changing is so hard for people. Yeah. You literally are having to rewire the physical nature of your mind so that way your ritual triggers your mind to go, oh, alpha, this is what I need to do now. You're having to unlearn all the programming you've built to however old you are. That's how many years of practice your brain has had, you know, Wanting to not, you know, get off work and you don't want to watch, want to watch TV and get on TikTok. You know. mm. You're going to have to fight that mental habit and literally carve out a new one by doing your ritual day in, day yeah. out, over and over and over yeah. again. This is where we're talking about really forcing the mm -hmm. muse to work for you. Mm -hmm. So, yes. I, I think creating that habit requires you to have to actually write it down, um, which kind of meshes a little bit into commitment where we're going to talk about having to commit mm -hmm. to your time. But, you know, in order for you to have that habit, you really have to have a space for that habit to exist. Um, and, it, and it's going to be different for everybody. It's some, for some people, it's early in the morning. For some people, like before your kids get up. I've heard artists that, are, that do that too. For some people, it's at the end of the day when everybody is asleep. Um, it just depends on what your schedule is like and whatever works for you. And it doesn't have to be the same every day. For me, I can't stand having a set time. Yeah. It makes me sick, but I can have a goal of, I want to finish this by a certain time. Right. When I, when I sit down to do our vlogs or do any of the creative content on the website, I never do it at a certain time. Right. I have a weekly to-do list mm. and I get myself into the flow mm. and knock out things in little chunks. Mm. I don't make myself do it at a certain time, but that's just the way my brain works. Mm. I can't, it makes me crazy having a set routine like that. Mm -hmm. So really play with what works for you. Right. Because everybody's brains are different. Right. And nobody's right. If someone says, do it at this time of day and in this way, ugh. Okay, don't listen to that. How long would you say it takes in order to create like a habit like that? <sighs> like a very, in, like a net, huh, it's hard. Okay. So are you talking about just like the habit where you're like, oh, I think about it now? Or are you talking like you, you're ready to go paint when you get? Yeah, ready to go paint. Habit. I would say it would take three months. Three months of consistent? Of consistent. Yeah. And that's the, that I would say that's probably right on point for 
the level of change that you have to commit to in order to have to build something like this it's not going to be easy you know it's it's not like once a week it's going to be like you know several times a week of you being Absolutely. consistent committed to it so to help you make that easier let's go on to our next point which is making the commitment and also using not using but incorporating those around you in involving them to help you make the commitment yeah um when we started figuring this stuff out it helped us actually figure out a commitment for the other things that were going on in our lives mm -hmm. that we also wanted to be a big part of our schedule absolutely and so whenever we were figuring out okay this is when alejandro needs to be on the canvas it was mondays thursdays and every other friday saturday and sunday yeah. and then tuesdays and wednesdays were date nights date night for my daughter and date night for my wife and that helped me understand where my boundaries were mm -hmm. otherwise i was just going to go crazy painting every single day and nobody was getting any other time with me so and that doesn't create good art because no. your art comes from you experiencing life yeah. If you're just staying at home painting, you're just a machine. Yeah. No one wants to buy a machine yes. print of yeah. whatever you're painting. It's very difficult for you to communicate what you're feeling or what you're inspired by of, about life because that's where art comes from. It comes from life. It doesn't come from, um, you know, sitting down in a closet and not experiencing anything There's ever. There's no magical genie that's going to grant you this magical masterpiece that's going to pop into your yeah. head because you were devoted and yeah. only painted. That's not a thing. Right. The level of artwork you're able to put out is equal to the level of experiences you're able to put in. Right. The and more, more you experience, the more you'll create. Right. And so that's why it's important for you to involve people that are in your life so that they understand what your goals are, what you're trying to do, mm -hmm. and that they can, can make that commitment with you and be supportive. Um, and so I think that's important for you to do, not just for the commitment of creating these rituals and habits, but it's also so that you can make sure that they are, um, part of the commitment in terms of being inspired for your artwork. Um, you know, the love you show your family and friends is just as important for your artwork as it is for them to understand that they're important to you as well. Absolutely. And you need things like binging Netflix yeah. and going out to the movies and yeah, yeah. going out on a weekend trip. You need those things. Yeah, you absolutely do. And so you got to work that into this commitment just like you need to work into that schedule and commitment for your artwork. And it'll work out fine because you're giving time for both. Absolutely. And you will feel really, really good when you're ready to get on whatever you're about to create. Um, and everybody will feel good for you. And for all of our the our listeners that are single and don't necessarily have the commitments that we married folk have, um, it's very easy to be married to your work. But again, I would I have been in that terrible hellscape. Don't do that to yourself because one, you're gonna burn out really fast yeah. because you you really have to. It's really the experiences you have and the experiences can be anything going on a trip watching a new show reading a book anything that makes you feel oh you're like oh my god this turns me on so much oh my god this documentary about elephants oh my gosh now i want to do elephants like that's what you got to find you got to find things to inspire you because the more content you put in and inspires you the more you'll put out you're like a vessel right you got your things are flowing through you you're not like it's not it doesn't start with you. You're just channeling it into something new. Mm -hmm. You're taking an experience and you're channeling it into right. a piece of art. Correct. So don't get lost only painting and don't get lost in the hustle culture, which is work 18 hours a day. Yeah, that's you, not there's work. no inspiration that comes from hustle. Um, there's no creative piece of artwork that connects with people emotionally from hustle and working. That's not a thing. And nobody wants to be reminded of work. So no oh, God. <laughs> And if they do, then, you know, that's, yeah. that, that's a whole different conversation. But, um, you know, enjoying life and, and really just getting out there and, and getting involved in other hobbies and interests is going to make your artwork that much better. Agreed. Yeah. All right. So that's all for this episode. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So if you haven't been with us before, we have, um, this is for each lesson or each podcast, we've got a corresponding video and blog that you can find.
find down below in the description. And our next podcast will cover creating the creating your inventory. Inventory, yes. The daunting inventory. Yeah, that's gonna be a good one because it's it's. I think it what what you've done in this part and in the skill set is going to add up to creating some really interesting inventory and making it a lot easier to it's create. It's going to be so much easier. Yeah. yeah. So you'll, much easier. You'll be able to do so much more inventory if you've done these first two steps. And you won't cry near as much. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next week. See ya. Bye, guys.